Let me first introduce myself to those who have never met before. My name is Christine Boland and I work as a trend analyst, a forecaster and um, consultant. And I help companies to navigate the future. And I do that on the level of a strategy. So on the consumer behavior and consumer insight level, but also a more specific layer of which we are talking today in the field of design language, colors, fabrics, trends, um, the more specific um, uh, signs of the times. And what is so nice of doing both these fields, so and the sign of the times and the design language is that I continuously feel this strong connection between both. And that's why I start this webinar with zooming out on what is happening in the world, how this is defining the sign of the times and how this is reflecting in design language, because I'd rather speak about design language than about trends, um, because design is a language. Actually, it's the language of its time frame. So understanding trends or design language needs an understanding of the sign of the time. So that's why I start my presentation with a zooming out on what's happening in the world and then zooming in on what are the specific colors, um, materials, and trends we see in design language. The presentation is named Human Nature. And um, during the presentation, you will find out why. But uh, in short, it, it means that we, human nature is actually the bundle of characteristics which we have as human beings. And what we see nowadays more than ever is that we, as human beings, react to what's happening in the world. And that's reflected in design language. And the word nature is nice because we are reconnecting to nature, re-embedding ourselves in nature. And that's the positive side of things happening now. But let us start with the presentation. What is happening in the world? And I have a, a, a slide here for you. And I think now I can uh, zoom out and you can zoom in. Um, if we have to frame this time frame, then the word VUCA comes up. And VUCA is a, a, a term which is used already for a longer time in uh, economics. Uh, and it means um, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And let me explain this. Um, <clears throat> the, our time is volatile. It is flu <coughs> fluid, excuse me, fluid, limitless, seamless. We see literally blurring boundaries between men and technology, be between genders, between countries, between thoughts, on the one hand. I'll come back to that later. So we live in a, a fluid, seamless, frictionless world. Uncertain, well, I do not have to explain that in this moment, I think. We have never experienced a more uncertain time as nowadays due to the corona crisis that literally every week the world is changing. Uh, but also before the corona crisis and the COVID crisis, um, there was this uncertainty making people uh, a, a, a bit anxious. And uh, the situation was so unpredictable and we have to deal with constant change. So one of the main things of the future is that we have to learn to deal with constant change, which is not very easy for us as a species. Then complex, it's that we have to deal with it. Everything is so exponential at the moment. And the developments in technology, for instance, go so fast that we literally, our internal processor is not able to keep up the pace with the implications of what's happening around us. And it's also complex because the world is so fragmented. There is also this um, polarization, which makes it, it gives us a feeling of unease and to who, um, uh, well, I, uh, in, in which camp do I feel good or is there something in the middle? We have to deal with fake news, which generates a lot of complexity because who can I believe? Um, and also the whole uh, privacy uh, issues of this moment, especially with the 5G and now we are all Zooming and, and um, meeting each other online, but is it safe and do we need an app to to tell if where I am and if I met somebody who, who is infected with the coronavirus, et cetera, et cetera. So that generates a lot of complexity and uncertainty. And then the last one is ambiguous. And ambiguous literally means having two faces. So it's it's about paradoxes. And we live now in a time frame which is 
full of huge paradoxes. And that's exactly what we see happening in design language, that it is all about, um, uh, all about reflecting this paradoxes. So let's zoom in a little bit on these paradoxes. And what we see then is that on the one hand, in the political situation of the world, we see on the one hand a, a very male, masculine display of power. And on the other hand, we see a rise of female um, role models and female politicians like uh, who are really role models to the world, uh, like Jacinta Ardern, which you see here on the image, but also Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez in uh, the US, Sophie Wilmes in uh, in Belgium or in Finland, we have Sanna Marin, who is in, in her team with five women. And Angela Merkel, of course, but also Katrin Jacobs, daughter in Iceland. Um, these are the, the, well, the, the upcoming politicians. And although it's not written continuously in the newspaper, there is an enormous rise of female power. And the, the difference between male and female in the sense of power is that male is more uh, target uh, focused and female is more process focused and that does not mean that the w women will rule the world but female thinking is ru will rule the world in the future and um, so that can also be a man who is more uh, well um, has a more holistic view more process minded etc so on the one hand we see this polarization which i mentioned it's either or black and white you're with it or without so we are literally excluding the middle or the more nuanced vision but on the other hand we see the rise of a more holistic even inclusive way of thinking and more caring for each other and for nature and we see a growing need to belong eh? that's a very basic human need to we are social creatures to to really belong to, to other people, to groups, to something. And we see a longing for embedding, embedding in the system, embedding in nature. We'll see that all in the trends. And yes, and I mentioned the manipulation, the false fact and the deep fake on the one hand, and on the other hand, the, the, the rise of the importance of meaning, wisdom, spirituality, that there's more in life than only economics, like you see in the image of Jacinta Ardern. So that's one paradoxical uh, uh, time frame indicator. And the other we see, one other we see here that on the one hand, we are dealing with overconsumption. We're creating an abundance of waste and everything around us is literally going exponentially. And um, we sometimes deal with the fact that things are so over efficient that there's no space for surprise or for thinking or for doubting or so. For many people, um, I think the pace is a bit too high. That's what we also see in the in the amount of people who are burnout out or who deal with um, stress um, release, uh, stress uh, related um, um, problems. But on the other hand, we see at the same time an increasing awareness, and we see it uh, an op um, an 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 increase of a conscious consumerism. And um, we see a tendency towards reduction and slowing down. And also, for instance, if you make uh, fashion collections or design collections, really think, what does my customer need? And the rest, leave it. So make it very specific, very um, really think, what is my customer uh, wanting? What can I do for him and how can I make it? So no superfluous detail, no superfluous products. Um, and that is also enhancing the, the, the green lifestyle. We see the coming up of more and more people wanting to eat plant-based. We see a huge trend toward, towards reusing, repairing, recycling, recrafting. So the re is literally in the air. Reset, rethink, that's what we are doing nowadays and probably slowing down and shifting down. And what we will see is both of these, these uh, ends of the paradox are both reflected in a design language. We'll see that later on in the presentation. So now we are to the third uh, paradoxical time frame um, uh, indicator. That's on the one hand, we see we deal with an accelerating climate change and we are literally exhausting Mother Earth. 
Um, and um, we see that by creating too much waste and too much uh, like um, 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 pollution that Mother Earth is suffering. And many people say we have to save Mother Earth, but I think we have to save ourselves, our species, because Mother Earth will survive, but we as a human species, we are in danger. We are literally creating our own extinction if we don't, if we are not aware. But the good news is that on the other end of the spectrum, we see a woke generation who um, is really aware and who's taking matter in their hands. And we have this, this Greta Thunberg and everybody, uh, uh, all youngsters uh, going out there protesting um, and really saying, well, we are rebel for life. We want to fight for a better world and um, let's do it together and let's uh, reconnect us to nature. And um, so in, in terms of trends, we see both normally fashion and design uh, reflect what's happening in society. But this time, in, and that's new, in design trends, we also see a rejection of this same society. And you won't believe it, but that's a, a huge trend and it's very inspirational. So let's go on. And that brings me to the idea that the design of the times, so we have the sign of the times and the design of the times, it's all about um, creativity. It's literally an outburst of creativity. When, when the, the more um, um, complicated the situation in the world becomes, uh, like nowadays, we are literally in a lockdown situation in many countries, the more creativity is coming up. That's a very good human aspect. So, Actually, I do have three main stories to tell you, three reactions to the sign of the times in which we can find the design language of this time frame and of summer 21. And even I show you some uh, inspirational uh, highlights for uh, winter 21, 22. And some trends you will see are almost timeless. So it's only little evaluation of, uh, of things happening. But we could say that these three big stories are underpinning all the trends. And the first one is reflect, the reflection of what's happening. So we will see a reflection of power, male power, female power, both um, ending in, up in a, a different design language. We see the rejection of society and we see the trend embed. And probably that's the solution between both um, paradoxical, even they, these are paradoxical, rejection and reflection. And rejection is uh, turning you back towards society and reflection is mirroring what's happening. So also that's a, a paradox. And then embedding is literally finding the way in between, doing it together, cooperate, um, uh, be embedded in team human, in technology and in nature. So let's have a look. The first uh, story is about reflection. And we, in each story I mention, you will see three uh, sub-stories, three ways of, of expressing it. But the underlying thought is that here we are reflecting what's happening in the world, in society. And here you see uh, it's about male power, female force, and spiritual wisdom. So these are three underlying thoughts of the trends we will see later in the slides. And for instance, the male power that we see bold silhouettes, bold shapes, and or sculptural almost, that we see kind of um, um, Cold War aesthetics and repetitive structures and order and utility details and monochrome color use. While in the female force, it's more body conscious, it's more flowing. We see myth, uh, mythological patterns. The Amazon is back, the, the strong uh, and the goddesses. And then that brings us to the third part of this uh, story where we see literally uh, the mystic symbols, um, uh, goddess dresses, silent shapes, nude colors, which the chakra colors as accent. In the end, I will show you the, the color mood of this, uh, this trend. And then you see that actually the actual accent colors are the colors of the chakras. So if you are in color business or you are creating your collection of pottery or pillows or pullovers and you have a story on why the why of your colors that always is interesting uh, to mention let's have a look at this male power and i think one convincing collection was balenciaga who literally turned over his his catwalk into the the setting of the european parliament 
and there were um, models walking with huge shoulders and uh, with passports around their, their neck and uh, um, identity uh, cards carrying with them and they were uh, like almost harnessed in their clothes. Here you see the, the, the catwalk setting and all this Euro blue color, which we will we see, we'll, we'll see in the collections later on. And you see that many designers uh, have this more uh, broad shoulder silhouette. And later on, we will see that it doesn't matter if it's a jacket or a stool or whatever, because it is this bold statement of shape. And he also here we see the, the influence of the Euro, uh, the Euro blue as a color and a color key. And you see the, the monochrome convincing statements, either in chairs or in a wall or in an outfit. And it's also about repetition, order, um, rhythm, also for visual merchandising, for architecture, for, for catwalk shows like here, Tom Brown, or retail design. This, for instance, is a, a store where, as a consumer, you can literally um, go treasure hunting and follow your curiosity and open the drawers and see what's in it. And um, here in fashion, you see this utility thinking translated into um, pockets and on-the-go, easy outfits where you can, uh, well, literally bring everything you want, pocket size. And what I mentioned is almost this, this Cold War aesthetics. It is sturdy, it bold shapes for architecture, for interior design, for accessories, for instance, some uh, which is going on in winter. What you see here are from diverse di designers, uh, the catwalk shows, and then you see the, the sturdy materials for handbags. And here you see this statement, um, convincing shape, but no superfluous details. Simple, bold, here the collection from Hermes. So it's literally from high to low in the market, we see this trend. And uh, it, it, it's almost a bit anonymous and, um, and abstract, clean, clear statement. And that brings me towards a more soft expression of the same trend statements. Uh, here, the latest store opened by COS, um, where uh, people can literally take a moment to pause and to reflect. Um, and the whole story is about circles and um, circular um, uh, statements and, well, the, the perfect, rounded, not edgy shaping. And how about this beautiful bookstore? That's also such a funny phenomena of this time frame that we have all this e-reader and we do everything on our mobile devices. And now bookstores are literally coming all over the globe in the most beautiful versions where you can have your coffee, where you can stay the whole day. And here we see a bookstore in, uh, in China with flowing dynamics in the architecture. And these flowing dynamics we also see in draped fashion design. And this idea of pleating and plissé is going on also for winter, like you see here. But what I like so much in this slide is this is one of the latest uh, architecture projects by uh, Zaha Hadid Architects on the right side. And this building is literally pleated as well. And on the left, you see an image from Iris van Herpen, who is famous for literally creating clothes with pleated fabrics and three-dimensional, 3D printed magic like she's doing. Uh, that's really part of this story as well. And we see draped outfits from very commercial to very high end. And in winter, we even see that, and I especially left the, the credits of the designers here, that you see many different designers working with a material which is normally not pleated, like leather. And, but they pleat it and they drape it with leather. And um, this is a good moment to probably to mention that uh, you don't see any credits in my presentation. That is because I think it's not so nice to have all these, uh, these, these texts in, in my images. So, um, but it's good to know that, um, and we can inform you if you are interested at the end, 
that this whole presentation is also available to purchase. So if you want, you can have the whole presentation with all the credits and all the Pantone references. And uh, But that's for later, probably. First, let's enjoy the inspiration. Also, in winter, we see this, this goddess-like, goddess but also strong, almost harnessed, but very female and sensual shaping, which brings me to the Amazon. Athena, the goddess of the war, and we see in silhouette, we see this, well, it's, it's, um, it looks very strong and convincing, but it is very female and sensual. And we see horse riding details in, um, in like in this table in the middle, but also in, um, in details for dresses here. But if you, if you do bags or other accessories, you can see uh, also for interior design, we see this idea of, horse riding Amazon uh, details translated in very diverse ways. Same for uh, metal plating um, as a detail. This can be in fashion, in design, but also in interior design around your pillows or in accessories, a very um, good uh, detail, which people really, really love. And um, it depends on your target group and on your product in if you do this only as a subtle detail or totally all over, that depends on it. Actually, that's up to you to make that decision. And I always say during my presentation, I, it's my task to do the homework and find out what's happening and really make clear where it's coming from and inspire you as a professional uh, to do your thing. And um, again, one, uh, uh, some of you are in the horticulture business and other are in the design and fashion business and other are in stationery and even package design we have today in the audience. So you as a professional, you can feel suddenly, now I'm inspired, that's important. And you will see a lot of images du during this presentation. Um, but I always say what you remember tomorrow morning, that's relevant for you. So um, sit back and relax and let's have a look at what's more in this presentation. What I mentioned, the mystic symbols of power, of wisdom, of love, so spirituality and uh, refined, meaningful um, images are also an, a great source of inspiration for this first trend of reflect. So we've seen the male power and the female wisdom and mystical wisdom. And what we see here is the color feel. And what is important to know in this trend that it, it tends toward very basic color. So the nudes, the black, the gray, the cakey, the white, um, and that's prevailing in this uh, statement. But as I mentioned, we have this Euro blue as an accent, but also these chakra tones. And we like, like in the, you see in the image here, it's and the pastel and the more saturated tone. So these coming together can have a beautiful glowing effect. So this was our first story, reflect. Male power, female force and spiritual wisdom. Let's go on to the second one, which is about reject. And here we see we, are, we um, designers are rewriting the code, hacking the system. There's protest, there's rebellion, and we literally reset, rethink, reuse, reframe, reinvent, re-everything. So rewriting the code, what we see is that uh, there is a tendency towards very um, um, traditional um classic silhouettes but designers decode the classic items and 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 hack a little bit the 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 system and then uh, reshape it in a in a new way so we see quirky shapes and it's literally the classic patterns coming back but we change them and the color feel here is very traditional but we also see this protest and rebellion, which especially before Corona, there was uh, one demonstration after the other. Now there are different ways of demonstrating. But here we see mixed silhouette and, and, and almost provocative texts and patterns and color use. And um, if, you, in your, if you imagine a, a huge demonstration, many, many people coming together, it's like a, an amalgamation of colors and people and genders and, and, and uh, graphic expressions. That's the idea of 
uh, of this second story within Reflect. And here we see also these basic colors, but then uh, there is space for the rainbow colors, the colors of inclusivity. And then the rethink and reuse is there we see a more assembled silhouette as well as for fashion as for interior design or for patterns. Uh, items are mixed. Um, we see patched and repaired details and patterns, handmade and the color field there is upbeat. So let's have a look how this uh, is reflected in either retail design or accessories or fashion that it is you think you recognize what you see, and then in the second thought you see, okay, but there, there something happened. And this is going on in winter. So this is a, a long-term trend, and the more creative you are, the more uh, expression there is possible in this. So it's a, it's a balance between recognizability and shocking or strange or surprise. Also, we see here the collection of Mew Mew, who is working with the very traditional Argyle-like patterns, but then in totally new silhouettes or applied in accessories or high-heeled shoes or bracelets or even the carpet of her um, catwalk was like that. So it's the, the, the relaunch of the classic graphic evergreens, the rugby stripes, the Argyle, the pinstripe, but changed, but altered, but hacked a little bit. And also the the, the schoolgirl uh, look. Uh, again, this is a slide um, which is going on in winter, like here we see the boarding school, uh, the, the neat girlies, but they are strong and they are um, convincing and there's always something changed, but it, it, tend to, it tends toward boarding school and very neat and um, heritage-like. Here, like you see the show of uh, Mew Mew again, uh, Anil Prada, help me, I don't know, forget, sorry. But um, uh, what you see here is the, the, the very classical recognizable checks, either in new color feel or very, very soft or in totally new uh, proportions. And that brings me to the Rebel collection of uh, the rebellious iconoclastics by um, Virga Ablo for uh, IKEA, making um, a very everyday seat, but then in gold. And oh my God, the legs are not the, of the same length. So it's literally playing with quirky details. And that brings me to the angry young girl power. And um, here we see, uh, we all know her, but the how dare you is almost, yeah, we see sweaters and slogans all with how dare you. And in design, we see a, uh, a translation towards girly-like outfits, but then with edgy details. So spikes or like um, Vivian Westwood is now campaigning towards, um, uh, uh, against, um, um, pollution and abundance of waste and she literally says buy less and let's save the world and love what you have and don't etc etc so that's the, the middle image is her um, but it's also you see um, in, in beauty and in accessories that it is princess like but if you come too close then there's well Wyatt uh, defense of uh, or um, spikes going on in winter, so pretty gets punk. It is, it, it's recognizable, but then certainly if you, if you zoom in, you see this, de these details. Same for color use. We, um, we see the, the pretty, pretty colors, the girly colors, but we uh, tend to use them in a neon color or to bring them together in new color keys like what's happening in the demonstration. And what you see here, it's not so good news for the fashion industry, although it's good news for the world, is that there is an awareness growing towards the pollution, which is caused by the, 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 the whole fashion industry system. And this is during Fashion Week London, uh, last, last edition. Um, so the awareness is there. And all of us uh, working in fashion really have to take this in account that, um, we cannot go on like wasting, wasting, wasting and uh, producing clothes for landfill. 
there has to be more love and, in, and, and attention towards what we are making. And this idea of slogans and texts, provocative statements, we see them everywhere. Hey, I'm a bit busy at the moment, and I was wondering if we could reschedule when I have some free time, probably around never. That's Coco Capitan. But also update nothing to impress no one. So that's what we want. Please slow down and let just slow down and reduce and ah, breath. So we see this in, 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 in all kinds of fields, in, in interior fabrics, on the catwalks, in accessories, on uh, in package design and also in crockery and, and stationery, this playing with um, messages. And I like this Louis Vuitton statement, the bag which is literally overloaded with all kinds of badges and, and, um, and, and notices. And also the street, uh, the graphic expression, which is uh, actually inspired by the urban environment, we see this translated into you name it, into clothes, into accessories, shoes, packaging, and also the combat wear is uh, the utility. And that brings me to the story of, uh, amongst others, um, Patagonia, who um, um, really take care of their whole ecosystem, so the whole eco chain of production, sourcing, um, transport, the clothes itself, the customer, the stores, and they say, if you as a customer, you have a, a, a lifelong guarantee on your items, and if you don't want it anymore, you can send it back and we either repair it for you or we remake it into something new. And then the statement repair is a radical act. I think that's very spot on by Patagonia and they opened pop-up stores and they're sold out um, within a few days because they reassembled uh, clothes which could not be repaired any longer. And we see that the resale market is taking over the fast fashion. And the whole consumer to consumer platforms like uh, Depop, but also United Wardrobe, Vestiaire Collective, uh, Vinted, um, they are booming. And um, secondhand is inspiring because it's sometimes a beautiful mess. And what do we see on the catwalk here? This looks like a secondhand mood, but these are the catwalk shows. And this was an exhibition in, um, during the Dutch Design Week showing in the middle that in Africa, people now are making furniture of all the clothes we send them because they have too many. And we see in the catwalk shows, for instance, here at Gucci, two different shoes. And we see we re reassemble things which are old or bring things together and, and create a new language or reuse and recycle. Why not making wall coverings by discarded um, discarded uh, laptops or computers. And in the Netherlands, we have a famous guy. He, his name is Dave Huckins, and he, is, um, uh, he has a website named Precious Plastic. And he, what he did, he, he made an open source um, machine in which you can shredder um, uh, plastic and then um, it, it's heating up and then you can create new products by 3D printing the waste plastic. And if you look at this website, you, you see globally, literally spanning the globe, people making uh, small bowls in Africa from discarded plastic, uh, iPhone cases, um, um, beautiful things to hang your coat on, et cetera, et cetera. So this Dave Hackens is really a pioneer of the world to come where we, where our waste is a resource and we really see a new design language emerging from that. So it's not perfect. It's reused, recycled, recollected and assembled. And also the, uh, the textile shredded leftovers are now on the catwalk or uh, translated like the student uh, of the uh, academy in, um, in Utrecht, the, uh, one of the famous academies in the Netherlands, she really um, took all the small shredded pieces and made some beautiful details of it and then reassembled it into a shirt. And we see the, well, so-called cheap materials, which are made very rich by 
applying them in a different way. And I really like the art of um, Arsenio. He, he had an exposition um, in the Netherlands during Dutch Design Week, and he is using the old bottles of household liquids and soap and detergents and things like that, and makes this beautiful, well, it's and like I say, Anthropocene tribal art, these masks. So for the color feel in this theme, we see the, the urban basics like black, cakey, um, camel, red and white and blue, together with the rainbow colors. Depending on your, um, the, 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 your, your target group or your product, you will either use more or less of these colors. So let's head on for the third and last story. And this is um, actually one of my favorites, um, because here we see that the, the, the movement of human awareness and human beings re-embedding in the natural system. And uh, it has long been that human beings, the Anthropocene is actually uh, human beings um, um, thinking that they are on top of any ecosystem and on top of nature and that they are uh, on top of the ladder of any hierarchy but now more and more we become aware of the fact that we are part of nature so that we have to be part of the ecosystem in the world and this uh, trend is reflecting that so we see the agriculture the horticulture and the floriculture so those my friends especially in america who are in the horticulture it's actually your time frame now because this is your profession and we see so many inspiration deriving from this field and um, uh, on the left, the agriculture is about longing for simple life, slowing down. We see very everyday items, prints inspired by biodiversity, handcrafted, hand-painted, natural diet, et cetera, et cetera. And the horticulture is the trend we see already for a longer time that we want to um, uh, surround ourselves with green, green in urban environment, green in our houses, green in uh, public space, in restaurants, in fashion, in lifestyle. We eat plants, we have um, a green infused life, which generates many, many uh, inspirational patterns and materials and all these greens. We will in the coming years never get enough of greens. And then the floriculture, where we see uh, a very expressive and creative, creative and, 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 and convincing silhouette. Um, and, and we see designers imitating in their either shapes or patterns or colors the awesome beauty of some tropical flowers. And um, some flowers are almost artificial in their beauty. And... Uh, the paradise um, idea of these beautiful birds with all the colors, the butterflies and the flowers are an inspiration for colors and patterns. But first, let's start with simple life, slowing down. And this is also a consumer trend because we see literally um, many, many people, not only in the US, but also in Europe, uh, as far as I know, uh, and in Asia, I don't know. But... Um, uh, people tending to grow their own crops, bake their own bread, especially during the corona uh, crisis and uh, we are in now, that there is a huge trend towards house, small household hold tasks, cleaning your house, make, baking your own bread, making um, uh, jam, jam, harvest your crop, having your own small little garden with herbs and making your herb herbal butters and things like that. So that's um, that was a trend already during COVID-19 crisis. It has a, a, an enorm, that was an enormous catalyst, but this will go on that people literally return to a more off the grid, simple, analog, natural life. And in design, this is reflected in very functional, yet very, very beautiful, simple items, reductionism, almost Amish inspired having the full attention by pouring your cup of coffee, having these beautiful cotton, crisp, fresh fabrics and beautiful statements, simplicity, less is more, 
and very, very um, natural colors and minimal, minimal, but very luxury. And we see household, uh, everyday household items, which is inspired to make interior design uh, products or the lamp on the left side, patterns. And I really like the slogan of SIF. In the Netherlands, it's named YIF, but internationally it's SIF. Tidy house, tidy mind. How cleaning your surroundings can make you happier. And I think this is a good example how marketeers, if they really understand what's happening in the world, they find the right, right uh, torch to touch, the right slogans to mention. So this marketeer was connected to what's uh, to the consumer trends. And that's um, actually the magic in uh, in selling or in creating is that you touch the right chore, uh, chore by the consumer. And here on the catwalk, we see very simple yet beautiful shapes and ticking stripes, the farmhouse pattern, patterns, uh, the checks, the mini patterns, the stripes, the ticking stripes. But it can be a dress, but it can also be the interior of the Moxie Chelsea Rockwell uh, Hotel. So there you see this need for simplicity and it's, it helps us to calm down. And we see um, handmade details like lace. And I very much like this project uh, that's a Dutch designer. Um, but uh, on the next slide, I'll tell more about him. But what you see here is the, 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 the craft of wicker basket, ba ba baskets. Um, translated into um, fabrics, but also into wool coverings and into this nice project by this guy who is saying, I I'm a global nobot, nomad, but I want to feel at home everywhere. So he made this huge foulards, printed his home furniture, and he can literally feel at home everywhere. His name is Boris Brooker. And this, this crafted, natural, simple uh, material and fabrics we see on the catwalk. So it is Dior showing straw bas uh, wicker baskets and Fendi and many other designers. And here like Tori Birch and Valentino, they all have this straw and raffia and it's macrame, it's knitted, it's woven. Um, breed it. This is winter already. There we see it's going on, but then more in leather or even in hair, hairy materials, fringes. And also in this system is the story of the, the um, re embedding, um, the agriculture re embedding the biggest little farm. If you've not seen this, uh, this movie, I, I suggest do try to see it because it's a, it's a lesson in how. It's a documentary and it's um, spending a time, I think, of 10 years, starting from a total bare, dry, impossible piece of land, growing in 10 years into what's a perfect, harmonious ecosystem. And you see all the steps and you see that nature is often uh, taking care of the problems itself, as long as human beings do not um, uh, use pesticides and things like that. And in Paris, there will be opened, I hope this, this year, but probably due to the situation now, it will postpone. But the first and biggest, largest rooftop farm in the world. So we are greening our cities and we are reconnecting to edible plants and fruits and vegetables. And we see that for dyes uh, on, um, uh, and dye processes, designers are looking to the colors of nature and that generates a new color feel on the catwalk, which is going on in winter, uh, where we also see the colors of amber and earth and clay. But you see that it's translated in a very modern way. And designers are experimenting with flowers making the prints themselves. And this is not only uh, academic uh, students, uh, students from the academy uh, and the creative um, explorers, but also uh, on the catwalk, we see this way of dyeing and making patterns and playing with flowers everywhere. Um, and what is interesting to know in the sense of trends is that um, for fabrics and patterns, there are always flowers, let's be honest. As long as I'm, I'm doing this forecast um, profession, there are always flowers, but which flowers? And this season, it's not uh, the simple um, uh, refined minimal 
a childish flower. No, it's the field flower, which grows in the wild, in the fields. And uh, these are the flowers we want. Or the very almost artificial magic of nature paradise flowers. So field flowers, wild bouquets. Bringing flowers together in, and here you see dresses, but this can, this can also be pottery, stationery, um, uh, pillows, the curtains in your house. Green up to cool down. This is the human, um, well, evolution that we found out that the more green there is on more earth, the less carbon there will be in the air. And we can really restore the climate by greening up and this is a global movement just started uh, half a year ago if you google green up to cool down you can join and you can help and you see the results and it's really uh, it gives hope for a better world and we see that designers everywhere in the world are trying to green up our environment green is so important green on the catwalk green on wallpaper accessories dresses flowers color keys and now I have to admit, I show you um, a little bit out of proportion, many green color keys, but that is because I made a beautiful journey at the beginning of this year when it was still possible to Colombia and Medellin. And I, during my trip there, I saw so many beautiful green details that I uh, wanted to share that with you and it fitted perfectly my story. And here in the middle, you see the dress of Marnie and she agrees with me, as you see. So never get enough of greens. Also the shapes of nature, the sculptural Garden of Eden inspired magic shapes nature has translated into details or in shapes. Even seed pots can be an inspiration for design. Look at these beautiful patterns. This is one of my favorites. It, it's either a wild animal or is it a flower or is it both and how how about combining this with flowers and and bright colors and look at the, at the beautiful patterns and again those of you in the horticulture i've been at your tpie uh, exposition in um, uh, exhibition and i've seen flowers in your in in your um in your collection which are uh, beyond beauty and here you see more of this. And then suddenly it's a sneaker or it's makeup or it's a pattern or whatever you are creating. And how about this? This beautiful bird translated into either the catwalk of Dries van Noten or details or shoes or prints and patterns. And this is my top favorite of the season because in the, in the, in the middle you see this zebra um, in symbiosis with this beautiful bird and then in the Dries van Noten collection we see actually the same inspiration translated for human beings so we can connect and it also inspires to alienate a little bit uh, the, 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 the play with flowers or flowers on a dark uh, font so this is the total opposite of the very fragile field flowers we saw in the beginning so here you see a huge amount of colors but if you have to say it in two sentences it's about the browns the earth the hay the straw and the blues and greens highlighted with as well as pastel as uh, very bright colors of flowers and birds so that brings me to the end of the presentation. We've seen reflect as a huge story, reject and embed. And as I mentioned before, you don't have to cover them all. It is those slides or those ideas which inspire you. Or oh, let's come back to which inspire you. Uh, those are relevant. And um, I think inspiration is the fuel for the times to come and creativity is the fuel of the times to come. And we are, I'm sure, connected all together in creativity and inspiration. And as long as we are inspired, we can do uh, whatever we are um, aiming for in our own business. And that brings me actually to the end of the presentation. And what you see here is a slide mentioning uh, a reader um, for those who are interested in, um, well, remembering every word I said, then you can um, uh, consider to uh, purchase this reader 
oh, there's even coming up uh, a pop-up. Hester, thank you so much. And uh, in this reader, uh, literally the whole story is written. You see the colors and you see of each statement, of each sub-story, you see the uh, some um, examples. And those of you who think, I want to have the whole PowerPoint, no problem, send an email to Hester and we'll help you with that. And then that brings me to the moment, I think, uh, Hester, that we, let me come back to you. Hi. Hi, I'm um, here. Hi, Hester. Um, that um, probably there are questions or remarks or things we can discuss in the last five or ten minutes we still have. Yes. Um, um, to be honest, uh, not too many questions. Um, I've had two uh, up till now, which is a compliment, I think, for you, because it um, it tells us that your whole story was very, you know, rounded up and, and, uh, and neat. So that's a good sign. Um, at least we'll take it as a good sign. Um, yeah, and there's a lot to digest there, so probably people think, I rest my case for the moment, but... True, or, true, true yeah. that's true. And um, so there was one question um, at the beginning uh, concerning the um, introduction. You used the term VUCA times, and um, there were two people asking um, for you to mean? explain again the, yeah, the words. So maybe yeah, okay, that's... Thank you. Yeah, I love to do so. Um, and I can go back to this slide. Oh, no, I'm, I'm here myself. Um, VUCA, and I'm very happy with this question. Thank you, because I forgot there was VUCA plus E. So let me start again. VUCA is the word for it. It started um, long ago. It's a term from economic situations. Um, but now it's uh, used to uh, literally define the sign of our times. And VUCA stands for volatile, so fluid, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And ambiguous is having two faces, so the, the, the paradoxical part of it. And the volatile is the fluid, seamless, everything. Um, uncertain, I think I don't have to explain that because the world is changing in a very rapid pace and nowadays even more. Uh, so also the post-pandemic world will be uncertain. We have to literally pioneer our way through it. Uh, complex, was, I was mentioning the, the, the fact that the technological developments go so fast that our internal processor is literally not able to keep up with that pace. And also uh, the complexity of who can I trust? What is true? What is false? Who can I believe? And uh, that is for people, it's also feeding the uncertainty uh, that I don't know who I can trust. So as a brand or as a company, it is the most important value is that people trust you. Uh, and um, I advise many companies during this COVID crisis, invest in the relation with your um, consumer. Show who you are. What's your DNA? What is your reason of existence how can you help your consumer through this difficult time um, what does my consumer need can i help it without probably earning something but earning a place in the heart of the consumer so um, trust is very important and an ambiguous these were all these uh, paradoxical things like on the one hand is male power and on the other side the the female wisdom and spirituality polarization, spirit, uh, exclusion, inclusion, um, but also the, the abundance of waste and the growing awareness. So these are uh, ambiguous. And then I had a plus E because I wanted to change the formula of only VUCA into that it's also exciting. You can say it's also frightening the time, but it's also exciting. I think we live in a time frame which is so exciting apart from the crisis we are in now, because um, imagine it and we can make it. Because techno technology and artificial intelligence and um, science and our creative human input together can make anything happen what we like. You name it and it can be made. Flying to the moon is a big story, but also small platforms or new materials to to be more specific in this field 
materials which look like fur but they are not fur and they look uh, light but they are heavy um, they are very thin but stronger than ever they reflect light why you don't see it they can harvest solar energy etc etc so our strange is creative ideas we can create it so it's about energy and excitement and emotion so it's VUCA, yes, challenging, we know, but it's also exciting. And that's a paradox in itself. I hope this was an answer to your question. Thanks, Christine. I think it was a great answer. Um, anyway, there was another question coming in from Claudia, and um, she's asking us if you, are, um, if you were able to share some sneak peek for winter uh, 21. Um, I can combine that question with another one that came in asking us when you are going to share winter. Okay. Uh, yeah, I probably I was not clear enough, but in this presentation we're like 10 or 15 slides, um, which were already representing the winter trends. Uh, what we see um, going on in uh, the, the essence of the winter, because we just finished uh, the, the whole analysis and the presentation as well which will be presented on the 2nd of July, isn't it, Hester? Those of you who want to be uh, keep, keep informed, please let us know because we will keep you, or either if you uh, either follow me on Instagram, Boland Christine, or LinkedIn, Christine Boland, because there we will post the calendar of um, webinars to come. And actually we will do two webinars on winter, one which is really on sign of the time, consumerism, and the bigger picture of the season. And the second one is into detail materials and colors. And they probably will be on the same day, Hester, isn't it? Yes. We are thinking about that, yes. Yeah, yeah. so we're definitely yeah. post it. But now yeah. your question, there were like 15 slides uh, la, 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 in my presentation. But the essence of the winter is all about what I mentioned already, re. Rethink, restart, reset, renew, and then some of you might think, oh, my God, then I have to redo everything. No, it's what I mentioned already in a few slides. You think you recognize what you see, but it's totally different. And that makes it so radical new. And um, the title of my season is Alchemy of the Times to Come. And volume one is named amalgamation and what we see is that we see ingredients which are really recognizable but when you mingle them together a total new design language is emerging and it's so inspiring that i it's the it's the idea that i am already talking for one hour but i could go on another hour but let's keep that for the second of july and those of you who can't wait please send a mail to Hester because also winter is available as a PDF, the whole presentation, the Pantone references, the references of all the images so you can research yourself. I hope this was an answer for Claudia and um, Hester. I am typing my mail address in the public chat as we speak because if anyone needs to send some questions, then here it is. Um, yeah, yeah, probably it's good to mention, Hester, that uh, when the webinar is um, over, there will yeah. be a small survey. Yes. You, I would really appreciate if you take, um, well, 30 seconds to answer this question, just so we know what we can do better the next time, if you are interested to keep be, being keep posted. Um, what did you think of the webinar? Was it up to your expectations? It's only four questions, isn't it, Hester? Yeah, it's four questions, and it's it would really helpful if you if you could fill that yeah, out. It will be lovely. Yeah, so it's an automatic mail that's coming in when you end the webinar. So that should should not be too big of a problem. Let's go. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one other question coming in um, as we were speaking, uh, coming from Irina, and she's asking us: Is sustainability in products something that's expected now, or does it still need to be clearly advertised as sustainable? That's a very good question, and I know many companies are asking themselves this question. I think it's also a very honest question, Irina, because um, we are now in the time frame that sustainability actually is a zero option. It is, it is you're either part of the problem or part of the solution. There's nothing in between. So there we have also this, this polarization is fine. So we are 
Um, and if you are part of the solution, then you're trying or you're, you're behaving as sustainable as possible. Um, it is uh, tricky to mention that too much because then um, consumers might think you are greenwashing. And what we see, uh, what I see in, in, in the market is that those companies who really do it from within and just do it, the customer find, the, the consumer will find out. So they will see um, they are taking care of their whole ecosystem. They are trying not to make so much waste. They are trying to reuse materials and all the other things you can do. So um, please be as sustainable in, in anything you do, also as a consumer yourself, but also as a producer and a designer as you can. Um, don't mention it too much, but if there's something spectacular, um, then do mention it because then it's content. Then if you are able to change plastic into an unrecognizable material, tell the people because that's content. And it's not showing, look, us being so sustainable. No, it is, look, us creatives finding a solution for a huge problem and ending up in a beautiful product. So um, be as sustainable as you can afford. Mention what is content-wise interesting. And for the rest, just do it. Okay. Thanks for answering that question. Um, I see we're on... 67 minutes now so i think because there are some people uh, sending more questions in the last few minutes um maybe it's good that we take some of those and answer them um in one of your posts again because oh, it's, yes. uh, yeah that yeah. sounds like a good plan because sometimes this 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 webinar gig this finish the webinar isn't it and then i can't say yeah, goodbye. I just, yeah we don't want that to happen so um i just want i i think that's it then for now and uh, any yeah. other questions that people have can um either send them to us by mail we will go through them if possible we will answer some of them and um um, yeah, and some I will answer in a in a LinkedIn post and uh, do some research and make sure that I really have a good answer. So yeah, um, yeah I think Hester, for now it's the moment to say thank you very much. I see that almost nobody left us, uh, not not even after one hour. So um, I I still want to uh, express my gratitude for connecting the whole globe together in this one hour in this huge audience and. Um, very welcome and next time and thanks again for watching and i say bye bye thanks everybody bye bye see you next time